Welcome to this lesson on input-output redirection. You need to remember that the C programming language was created to help build the Unix operating system. When we execute commands from the Unix prompt, we can redirect a command's input away from the keyboard to a file or another program using the pipe operator. We can redirect a program's output from the monitor to another program or to a file. You'll learn in this lesson that C supports these operations by predefining some file pointers. Standard input typically points to the keyboard. Standard output typically points to the monitor. And standard error allows us to prevent a key message from being redirected. It will always appear on the monitor. And so let's go ahead and get started. You're going to find that you're performing traditional file operations, but you're just using these predefined file pointers. So let's take a look at some commands that use IO redirection. The first command, the DIR command, is redirecting its output from the screen monitor to a file named files.txt. The second command is using the input redirection operator to take Moore's input file pointer and point it to that file, files.txt, that we just saw. The Moore command displays output to the screen one screen at a time. The third command, the DIR command, is using the append operator to append the output that would typically appear on the screen from the screen to the file append.txt. If the file doesn't exist, the command will create it. And finally, the fourth command uses the pipe operator, which redirects one program's output to become the input of the next program. In this case, the DIR command will display its directory listings one screen full at a time. And each time you press a key, it will display the next screen. And so these are commands that we can execute from the MS-DOS prompt. We can execute similar commands from the Unix prompt. And so by default, we're going to find that our C programs define several common file handles. Standard in will typically point to the keyboard. Standard out will point to the console display and standard error will point to the console display. What's unique about standard error is it doesn't get redirected if the user redirects a command's output to a file or to another program. And you'll find that some C compilers also define a handle for standard print, which redirects to our printer. And so our first program is going to write the message, hello world, to the screen display because it's writing to standard out. You'll see that we start the program with our typical header, standard io.h. Within standard io.h are the definitions for standard in, standard out, standard error. And it assigns those values so the operating system knows where to associate the corresponding output. We've got a traditional main program. Um, and then we're using the fputs function to display our string to the standard out. And so if we just run this program, we're going to see the message hello world appear on our monitor. But if we run this program from a system prompt, we can redirect the output to a file or we can pipe it to another program. Our second program illustrates the use of standard out and standard error. You can see that we write to both using the fputs function. In the first case, we're writing the message standard output to the standard output handle. And then we're writing standard error to the standard error. And so if we were to run this from the command line, by default, standard error is always going to go to the monitor. You can't redirect it. Standard out is associated with the monitor, but we can redirect it. And so when we run this program, we're seeing our outputs are showing that the standard output is going to the monitor, and they've highlighted the compiler in this case that standard error would typically appear on the standard error handle. And so if we ran this from the command line and redirected it, what we would see is the message standard error because you can't redirect the output of standard error. It's always gonna make its way back to the monitor. And that's because we use it to display error messages that we don't want to get redirected. And so our command line in this case would say program, the name of our executable. And we're using the output redirection operator to redirect the output of standard out to the file, file.txt. And so when we run the program, sure enough, we don't see the message for standard out. It's been redirected to the file, but we do see the message for standard error. 
The purpose of this program is just to give you an understanding of what is standard error and the fact that you can't redirect it. We're going to look at a couple examples here. Our first program just illustrates the fact that we're going to use traditional file operations to write our messages to standard error, standard in, standard out. And so in this case, we're opening up a file, alphabet.txt, that we created in our file um, lesson. And so we're using fopen to open the text. We're opening it in read mode. We defined a character that we're going to be reading into, and we're going to read from the file one character at a time until we encounter the end of file. And so note our assignment, our, our while statement, we're assigning letter, the value that's returned um, by the fget character function. And when it finally gets to the end of file, it will assign an end of file to letter, and then it's going to perform the test. And the fact that end of file is equal to the letter that was just returned, our loop will end and will close. Within the loop, we're just outputting the letter to standard output. So we can use standard in, standard error, and standard out, any place that we would typically use a file pointer. This program is reading its input from standard in, and it's going to grab one character at a time from the standard input. That could be the keyboard if the input gets redirected. It could be from a file, or it could be from another program's output that was redirected to it using the pipe operator. So you can see, again, we've got standard io.h. It's got our definitions of standard in, standard out, standard there, as well as our file um, function prototypes. And so we need it. Our function um, is not getting any command line arguments, so it's int main void. We've got our character that we're going to read one character at a time from the standard input device until we receive the end of file, until no more characters are coming. Each time we get a character, we're going to use the two upper function that's defined within ctype.h is part of the standard library that converts a character to uppercase. And after we convert to uppercase, we're going to write it to standard out. So this program is just looping, getting a character from standard in, writing that character to standard out in uppercase. And we're going to do that until we encounter an EOF, an end of file. So pretty straightforward processing. But now we've created an application that we could take a file that was in lowercase and redirect that file to become the input to this program. We could take output from our file and pipe it to this program and display that output in uppercase. And so this program does the exact same processing. It gets a character at a time and converts that character to uppercase and then displays it. But you'll see that this program is using the get care function to get a character of input. It's using the put care function to output a character, in uppercase in this case. And so if you were to drill down and take a look at the definitions of the get care function and the put care function, they're both defined for us. And um, it turns out that both of those perform file operations. Get care gets a character of data from standard input and put care writes a character of data, the standard output. So behind the scenes within get care and put care, they're using the file operations that we just saw, f put c and f get c, using standard in and standard out. And so in this case, if you ran this program from the command line, you can redirect input into it. And because get care is based on standard in, it's gonna be redirected. You can redirect the program's output somewhere because put care is defined by standard out, it's going to get redirected. Many times when we work with files, it'd be nice to have line numbers in front of our file's contents so we could refer to specific lines. And so this program reads redirected input and outputs the line that it read, but preceded by a line number. Let's take a look at the code. We're using standard io.h because that's where standard in, standard out, our file operations are defined. Um, we're creating a buffer that's called line that's going to contain each line of input that we read. We start out at line number zero because we haven't read anything yet. And then we're going to loop through the redirected input, reading a line at a time 
using f gets. You can see that f gets gets the line, the size of the line, and then the, where we're reading it from, in this case, standard input. And then with each iteration of the loop, we're printing the value of line number. You can see that we're using the prefix increment operator. And so with our first line, we're going to increment line number. It will become line number one. We'll display the line number followed by the line that we read. We'll loop again and we'll increment line number. It will be line number two. We'll display the line that was read. And we'll repeat this process, putting a line number in front of each line that we receive. Again, when we work with files, there's times where we wish we knew the number of lines in a file. And so this program displays a count of the number of lines that were redirected to it. And so it's very similar to the um, last program in that it's going to loop looking at each line of redirected input. But rather than displaying the line number, it's just going to increment the line number. And so we're not going to display each line perceived by a line number, but rather after we've read all the input, we're going to display a count of the number of redirected lines. And so in this case, you can see that um, we're initializing line number to zero. We haven't read anything yet. Um, we're going to, with each iteration of the loop, just increment line number. Because we're not displaying line number, it doesn't matter if we use the prefix increment operator or the postfix increment operator with each iteration. We just want to increase the count of the number of lines that we've read. And so if we run this program um, without redirecting any input to it, we're just going to see redirected lines is equal to zero. If we redirect input to it or pipe another program's output to it, we'll see how many lines were redirected. Now we talked about the fact that the operating system will define standard in, standard out, in some cases standard aux, which will associate with a communications port, and then in some cases standard print. And so I want you to experiment with this program to see if your operating system defines standard print. And what this program does is just splits the redirected input that it receives, writing the input to the screen and also writing the um, input to the printer. And so we're going to just loop one line at a time, getting the line and then outputting it to either the printer or the standard output. And if your compiler doesn't support standard print, it will just display an error message when you um, try to compile that standard print is undefined. But if it does, you can redirect output to this program and it'll send it to your screen display and to your monitor at the same time. Now this program is kind of fun. It's going to combine command line arguments with IO redirection. And so you can see that we've defined main to use the argc and argv pointers um, that contains our command line. But what the program does is it's going to display the first in lines of redirected input, meaning the first five, the first 10, the first 25, whatever argument we pass on the command line. If we don't specify a command line argument, then it's going to default to displaying the first 10 lines. So let's take a look at our code. So we've got our command line arguments, argc and argv, and then we're going to or declare a line variable that's going to contain each line that we read. Um, we've got a couple counter variables, i and j. The first thing the program does is it looks to see, did they pass the n, the number of lines that they want to see redirected as part of the command line? And so if they just ran the program and didn't specify n, then um, argc will be less than 2. So we're going to use the number 10 lines as the default. If they did pass a command line argument, we're going to use the C library ATOI ASCII to integer to convert the value specified in argv1 to a, the number that we want to number of lines that we want to display. And so if they've specified garbage for the command line argument, they didn't specify a number, they specified something else, um, ATOI will return the value zero. And so it's going to cause us not to display anything. So the program actually works if they give us bad input. Once we know the number of lines they want to display, we just do a for loop starting with line zero. As long as we're less than the number of lines they want to display, we're going to read a character, 
um, or we're going to read a line from the redirected input, standard in, so you can see how we're using F gets to read that line. And we're testing, though, in case they wanted to see 10 lines and the file only contained five lines, when we get to that sixth line, we're going to get an end of file. So if that happens, we're going to break our loop and end our processing. If it's not an end of file, we're just going to display the line that we read. So in this case, if they want to display 10 lines of code or a file, we'll get a line, check for end of file, output the line. We'll get a line, check for end of file, output the line. So our loop is pretty simple. But by combining input and output redirection with command line arguments, we can build some pretty powerful programs with not a lot of lines of code. And so as you've learned, using standard in, standard error, standard out, creating programs that support I.O. redirection is pretty easy. What you'll learn next is that C arrays allow you to store multiple values of the same type. So far we've created variables. Each variable had a type, int, float, or care, and was only able to store one variable at a time. Common operations in C, however, require that you store multiple values of the same type. We might have an array of student scores. We might have an array of characters that create a character string. And so we maybe want to be able to sort and search those arrays. And so in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to do that. Um, in this case, we've got code that does a simple array sort or search operation that's looking for a particular string. And so we've got our array size defined as five. We're not passing any command line arguments to the program. We define an array of um, character string pointers that point to the strings AAA, CCC, DDD, BBB, EEE. And then we're going to loop through our array looking for the value BBB. And to find it, we're using the str comp um, function that's built into the C runtime library. And so when we perform a linear search in this case, um, we just start the first element and we say, does it match what we're looking for? We go to the next element, does it match what we're looking for? And so we search each element in the array until we find it. When we find it, um, we can display the index or use the index that it's associated with. And so in the next lesson, we're going to um, look at searching algorithms, we're going to look at sorting algorithms, we're going to find that several are built into the C standard library. So let's go ahead and get started.